Hey everyone and welcome to class. For today, there are no props required, but if you want to grab a set of blocks for a little bit more stability as we flow through some of these poses, feel free to have those nearby as needed. Otherwise, whenever you have your space to practice in, go ahead and meet me in Shavasana. We're gonna start down on our backs. And when coming into your shape, go ahead and bring your legs alongside the long edges of the mat. Arms nice and wide, palms facing the sky. And as you come into your shape, give yourself a moment to first settle in, to make any fidgets, any little movements you need to really arrive. Creating as much space as you need. Then go ahead and soften the gaze, maybe bring the eyes to a close. Closing off the outside world, allowing your mind to turn inward. Bringing the attention to the breath, to the body, to any sensations you feel within. And then as you begin to fall a little bit heavier into the earth, start to reach forward towards the top of the mat with your heels, kind of stretching out the legs, finding a little bit of length through the bottom part of the spine, maybe some space through the hips, and then start to reach the fingertips down and out at an angle, whatever direction they're facing, and just kind of reach them out and away, keeping a nice scoop of the shoulder blades underneath you to keep that chest open, just stretching the body out just a little bit more. Like you're growing a few inches in the legs and the arms. It's creating a little bit more openness through the front of the body. Adding in a gentle lift of the crown of the head towards the top of the mat or the mat, the space up above you. Keeping a gentle lift of the chin, opening the throat. being very receptive to the energy around you, the energy you bring onto your mat today. And then start to find a pattern of breath where you're inhaling nice and slow for a count of four, pausing for two, and exhaling for four. Pausing for another two in between. And then finding that rhythm for maybe about three or four breaths. Deep inhale, four, three, two, one. Pause with that expansion for one, two. Then exhale for five, for four, three, two, one. Pause, two, one. Deep inhale, four, three, two, one. Pause for one, two, and then exhale, four, three, two, one. And pause for two, one. Go back to that inhale. Take two more on your own. Now your next inhale, deep inhale, fill all the way up, filling through the belly all the way to the tips of the collarbones, pause, and then open the mouth, exhale. Seal the lips, come back to the natural rhythm of your breath, and go ahead and walk the feet in towards your sit bones, bringing the soles of the feet flat down to the mat. 
Go ahead and walk the feet out towards the outer edges of the mat and allow the knees to knock together. Bring a little bit of softness to the low back. Stretch the arms up and overhead. Reach the fingertips up nice and long. Then bring the hands back down to your belly. Walk the feet back in. Bring them in line. Hips, knees, and ankles. And then go ahead and bring the right knee in towards the chest. Give it a good squeeze in towards your collarbones, knee to, knee to collarbone. And feel free to keep that compression or maybe find a little bit more space, more depth by bringing the thigh alongside the side of the body. And just explore some space. Feel free to find some movement that feels good and working your way into the hip. And that left foot can stay right where it's at or you can extend the left leg long. Finding a little bit more mobility within the pelvis. And keeping that spine nice and long, keeping that connection between the back of the skull and that low back. Keeping a nat those natural curves of the spine. But staying connected. Feel free to linger wherever feels good. And then go ahead and bring that right knee over and across to the left. Keeping that right shoulder anchored down onto the floor. Finding a twist, not forcing any depth right off the bat, allow the breath to bring you there. With every inhale, you maintain your length and with every exhale, you twist a little bit deeper through the belly, allowing that spin to come naturally. Inhale back through center. Bring the knee back into the chest. Left foot comes back down to the earth. Right foot meets the left. Switch sides. Left knee in towards the chest. Found that compression. Right foot can stay where it's at or it can extend long. Your choice. Whatever feels good for you and your body. And then go ahead and find some movement within that left hip. Maybe that compression feels good. Maybe you want a little bit more depth, more space by bringing that left thigh alongside the torso. Keeping that reach of the heel of the right foot nice and long and again, keeping that length through the body. Maybe movement feels good, maybe stillness feels good. So always feel free to linger and spend some extra time in a depth that feels good, that allows you to create space. And then go ahead and bring that left knee over and to the right, keeping that left shoulder anchored down to the floor as best you can. Nice and slow, twisting through the belly. Every exhale, feeling that Left knee settle a little bit closer to the floor. And again, that right hand is just resting on the knee. It's not forcing it to make that connection. Inhale back towards center. Bring that left knee in towards the chest once more. Right foot comes back down to the to the earth left that meets the right and then from here go ahead and scoop the tailbone up towards the top of the mat bringing that connection between the low back and the mat and then go ahead and lift the legs up toward or the heels up towards the sky feel the belly turn on belly button in towards the spine to keep that connection low back to mat heels reaching up towards the sky finding some length and then the back line of the body 
And then go ahead and either grab hold behind the thighs, maybe behind the knees, behind the calves. Start to bring the legs in towards you like you're coming into a supine forward fold. Again, keeping that connection of the spine onto the mat. So those legs are coming towards you in whatever capacity feels good. You can keep a slight bend in the knees if you feel like you're really reaching for your legs. And then if you have a lot of space within the back line of the body, within the back line of the legs, you can always start to bring those legs over, 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 like you're coming into a soft plow pose. Reaching those toes up and overhead at that amount of compression and space feels good for you getting started. Again, only move as far into this as it feels good. Just giving you the option to explore something further if that's available within your body. It's not a need, just an option. Wherever you move to, go ahead and start to slowly unravel, bringing the low back back down to the floor. Heels up to the sky, toes reaching towards the shins, towards your towards yourself and then keeping the low belly engaged slowly start to lower the legs towards the floor nice and strong for 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 heels touch the floor and then walk the feet in towards your sit bones once more knees bent feet flat scoop of the tailbone engage the core ribs and hip points come towards one another and then a nice gentle bridge pose open the front of the body not your biggest not your most engaged just a way to find some opening for five four three two one lower hips back down to the mat knees in towards the chest the chest grab hold behind the knees and slowly wrap as many times as you like up to the top of the mat we're coming into a forward fold. So once you find that last little roll, go ahead and cross the ankles, step up towards the top of the mat. And find a generous bend in the knees. So much so that your torso is able to make a connection to the tops of the thighs. Feel free to weight shift forward and back side to side. kind of warming up the soles of the feet. There is some balance that we'll be working through later on in class. So it's good to wake up that connection, explore all four corners, big toe, inner lining of the heel, outer lining of the foot, all the way to the pinky toe. And slowly make your way towards center, weight bear evenly left to right, front to back. And then start to build a little bit of energy by driving through the sole of the feet, lifting the sit bones up and back behind you as you push the knee, the backs of the knees back towards the back of the mat. So move in this capacity with every breath. So on every inhale, you find length within the spine, a lift of the tailbone, and every exhale, you find a little bit more energetic push through the soles of the feet, through the backs of the knees. Just a few more breaths, moving nice and slow. Fingertips are staying down onto the earth. Head is remains heavy. And just waking up the backs of the legs. Doesn't have to be your biggest, deepest fold here in this moment. And then wherever you are moving from, go ahead and stay here. Deepen the bend within that right knee. Plant the right hand. Left arm sweeps up and overhead as you spin the chest towards the left, coming into a twist. Maybe that left leg straightens a little bit more. Keep that sit bone lifted. Pressing strong through the heel of the right hand. Close everything up. Left hand comes back down. Straighten-ish through that right leg and switching sides. Straighten a little bit more through the right side as you bend deeper through the left side. Left hand plants, right arm sweeps up and over, spinning the chest towards the right. Collarbones shine over to the right side. Staying lifted within, within that right sit bone. 
pressing through the palm of that left hand as you reach all the way through the right fingertips, trying to stay nice and open through the collarbones. Right hand comes back down to the earth. Deep bend in the knees, really soften like we did when we first got here. And then start to unravel the spine all the way to stand nice and slow, like you're moving through ragdoll. Pressing through the soles of the feet. Knees start to straighten. Hip points start to shine forward, unraveling all the way up through the upper back. Gaze lifts last as the arms sweep up overhead and hip. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead, really reach up nice and tall. Finishing that inhale, grab hold of the left wrist. Reach up nice and tall and arch over to the right. Feel free to stay here or you can curtsy that left knee, that left leg behind the right and deepen that side body opening all the way from the outer lining of that left hip. Breathing in through the spaces between each and every rib. Creating space all the way through the left armpit. And then inhale back to center. Grab hold that right wrist as you reach up nice and tall. And then on the exhale, go ahead and reach over towards the left. Add in that little curtsy if you want to create that space. Really bumping that right hip rib cage over towards the right, trying to spread each and every rib to let in a little bit more air. Inhale back to center. Nice and tall. Exhale, hands come through heart center, hinge at the hips, forward fold, nice and slow, all the way down. And as you go ahead and fold, or find that fold, go ahead and come into ragdoll. Keep a soft bend in the knees. Allow your head to your neck to fall heavy shoulders to relax so you're feeling a small degree of traction through the shoulders through the upper part of the spine feel free to find stillness or a gentle sway if that feels good maybe even close the eyes two more breaths Go ahead and plant the hands, step the feet back, high plank. Pausing here just to feel a moment of integration, kind of turning on all the muscles within the body, strong within the arms, belly button in towards the spine, strong through the core. Legs are turned on, thighs are strong, heels are driving to the space back behind you. Maybe a gentle lift of the chest, a gaze beyond the front edge of the mat. For five, four, three, two, one. Press up and back, downward facing dog. Five breaths here. Find any movements that feel good, pedaling the feet, bumping the hips left to right. Maybe pressing the chest down and close to the earth to open up the shoulders. Everything is an option here. Just explore your space. Maybe bend and straighten the knees. Get the legs involved a little bit more. Take some weight out of the upper body. And on your next breath or so, go ahead and settle into your center. Find that integration, that even workload from the upper body, the lower body, all coming to a point as you lift the hips up and back towards the sky. On your next inhale, right leg lifts up and back behind you. Exhale, bringing that right foot outside the right hand, big step forward. 
And once that right hand plants, feel free to stay up, down on the palms, maybe up on the fingertips, but go ahead and allow the back knee to drop down. As we spend a few extra moments here, feel free to kind of work into your space, finding some depth within the hips. Maybe opening and closing that front right knee. Pressing those hip points down closer to the mat. But wherever you'd like to move into, whatever depth you create within your body, stay light and lifted through the arms. So the crown of the head is reaching nice and tall. So that the effort is in the legs, the focus is on the legs. And breathe into the space. Gentle lift through the low belly. Go ahead and tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Pause here, low lunge. And then exhale, send the hips back in space, straining through that right leg, extended pyramid pose. Left heel falls a little bit heavier down towards the floor. Bump that left hip forward and down, so that you feel a little bit more length within the back lining of that right leg. Keep that chest and heart reaching forward. Then go ahead and bend into that right knee once more, come into that low lunge just for a pause. And then go ahead and drop the left heel down and in so that, that inner arch is now onto the mat. And then keeping that right hand down or that right forearm onto the right thigh, open the body up, come into side angle. Working a little bit more into the soles of the feet, keeping those inner arches lifted, feeling strong within the leg. Pressing the hips forward, opening through the inner lining of the thigh here. Staying strong and lifted within that right side body. And go ahead and let the hands come back down to the earth. Spin onto the back toes. Bring the right foot back to meet the left. Exhale, downward facing dog. Here for a breath. Inhale, left leg lifts. On the exhale, that left hand, that left foot is gonna come outside the left hand. Big step forward. Pause here in your low lunge. Squaring off the hips, keeping that spine nice and long, staying tall here. Drop the back knee straight down. Feel that space being created within the hips, opening within the front of the right hip. You can always stay down on the palms, up on the fingertips. If you did grab a set of blocks, you can sneak those underneath your hands. And again, working that left knee out and in. Gentle press of those hip points down a little bit closer to the earth. Just allowing everything to fall heavy as you find lightness within the upper body, heaviness within the lower body. Press through the back toes, lift the back knee, pause here in your low lunge. And then go ahead, exhale, sit the hips back in space, extended pyramid pose. Still working on creating space. So if you still have a bend in that front leg, that's okay. We're just working towards creating space within the back line of the legs, front of the hips, everywhere. Is still trying to create some space within itself here in the beginning of class. Gentle lift to the tailbone up and back behind you. And then go 
ahead and rebend that left knee. Drop that right heel down and in. Inner arch comes onto the mat. So the foot comes onto the mat. Left hand can stay down or on a block, or that forearm can come onto the left thigh. Open the body up, coming into side angle, opening through the inner lining of the thighs. Especially that front left leg. Because we're keeping that knee open, making sure it's in line with that ankle. It's not caving in or splaying out. So we're staying active within the hips, keeping the hip points facing the right side of the room. And again, staying light and lifted within the torso, within the upper body. So we can keep creating space, strength, wakening up the lower body. Gaze can stay down to the floor, up at the top hand. Gentle lift of the low belly, again, staying mindful within the core. Hands come back down to the earth, spin onto the back toes, pause in that low lunge. Reach the chest and heart forward. Plant the hands, left foot comes back to meet the right. We're gonna take a vinyasa, starting with your variation of a full push-up. You can drop the knees if you need. Once you come back into that plank, drop the knees. Sit the hips back, forearms come down to the earth. Gaze forward, inhale, pull the body through, upward facing dog. Really opening up from hip points all the way through the belly. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Inhale, right leg lifts. On the exhale, that right foot is gonna come in between the hands to the right thumb. Right foot's gonna plant. Drop the back knee. Inhale, low lunge. In this more narrow stance, feel free to make an adjustment as you need based on your body, what feels good. So if a super narrow stance feels like too much pinching in the front of the hip, feel free to just wiggle it just a pinch wider to give yourself some more space. That's perfectly fine. We want to be reaching up and forward with that left hip point, staying lifted within the belly all the way up through to the fingertips. And hands come back down to the floor. Lift the back knee, send the hips back in space, coming into a more narrow pyramid pose. Working towards squaring those hips, really reaching that tailbone back in space. Feel how that lengthens the back of that right knee, back of that right hip. And then go ahead and bend into that right knee. As you do that, go ahead and bring the hands towards the top of the mat. So they're out in front of that right foot. Feel free to walk, to step that left foot a little bit closer if you need. We're going to start to shift our weight into that right foot. And as we do, as we bend a little bit deeper into that right leg, we're going to come onto those left toes a little bit more. So much so that we're able to eventually lift the left leg up and up up and up the mat, coming into a supported warrior three. So we're strong and engaged in that right leg. You can keep a soft bend in that right knee, but you're still reaching, you're still engaged and mindful through the back line of that left leg. So you're reaching those left toes back. The left leg is lifted. The fingertips are still on the ground, but we're engaged through the back body. We're still finding lift. We're still finding opening across the collarbones here for five, four, Three, two, one. Go ahead and reach, bend deeper into that right knee as you reach those left toes back, 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 back. Left toes drop, drop the back knee. Inhale back up and out of it, low lunge. And then exhale, sit the hips back in space. Half splits, reach those left, those right toes up towards the sky. Plant the right foot, hands frame that right, right front foot, right foot meets the left, exhale downward facing dog. Take a breath, reintegrate, feel how left and right sides probably feel a little bit different right in this moment. Let's go ahead and even it out, inhale left leg lifts, 
exhale, drive that left knee up and in to bring that left foot between the hands. Feel that more narrow low lunge. Drop the back knee. Inhale, Anjane Asana coming into that low lunge. And as you come into this space, feel free to wiggle that left foot out if you need a little bit more space for your body. The idea is just to make it a little bit more narrow than the round before. So before we were super wide, we were working into our depth. Now we're trying to create a little bit more space by being a little bit more intentional about doing so, keeping that right hip point up and lifted, lifting through the belly, through those fingertips. Hands come to the mat, send the hips back, straighten that left leg, extend the pyramid pose. Keep that reach of the collarbones forward. Work through squaring those hips, see how that changes the sensation. Soft bend in that right knee. Bring those hands just beyond the front foot. So to the top corners of your mat, feel free to step that back foot in a little bit. As you start to take more weight into that front foot, bending deeper into that left knee, coming onto those right toes, shifting weight forward as much as you can until that right leg can be freed up and lift. Fingertips staying down onto the mat. Pressing through those hands a little bit. Again, you can bring the blocks in if you have them to kind of bring your torso up a little bit more. But you're keeping that reach within the back toes, engaged in the back line of that leg. Strong within the left thigh. Holding here for five, for four, three, two, one. Deep in the bend in that left knee, reach those right toes back, 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 back until they touch the floor. Drop the back knee, inhale, arms sweep up, Anjane Asana, open up. Maybe find a gentle back bend. And then exhale, send the hips back, half splits. Frame that front foot, lift those left toes. Send the hips back in space. Come back into that left foot. Hands plant, left foot meets the right. We're gonna take a vinyasa once more. So starting from high plank, take your variation of a push up, drop the knees if you need. Coming back into that high plank, drop the knees, sit the hips back, gaze forward. Forearms plant, pull the body through, snaking all the way up and forward, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Another breath to integrate. Maybe things are starting to feel a little bit more even side to side. Find a wiggle or two. On your next inhale, right leg lifts high and back behind you. On the exhale, right hand come, right foot comes in too, in between the hands. Keep that back knee lifted. Inhale, arms up and overhead, crescent lunge. Pull that left hip forward. So that might mean a gentle tug of that right hip crease, that right hip back. Again, this stance is a little bit more narrow. Adjust as you need. But if you're able to keep that right knee hugging in a little more energetic, left to right, to really scissor those thighs in towards one another. Reaching those fingertips up tall. Exhale, send the hips back in space, hands frame that front foot, extended pyramid pose. Let's work into those inner thighs once more. Let's spin that left heel down. So staying in that, those, that extended pyramid pose, keep that back leg straight. Just spin that left heel down. Bring the right hand in front of that right foot. Open the body up, coming to that triangle pose. So kind of like side angle, we're finding a deeper sensation within the inner lining of that front leg. Opening through the hips, opening those hips over towards the left. Left hand comes down, frame that front foot once more, spin onto the back toes. And then start to take weight into that right foot. So again, take a step with that left foot if you need a little bit of a smaller stance to get started. 
And then you're shift into that right hand, uh, that right foot, bending into that knee until that left leg can slowly lift. Keep the hands down onto the mat if you'd like to keep them there to get your balance. Otherwise, can you bring the right hand to set heart center? The left hand to heart center. Strong in that right foot. Keep reaching those left toes back in space and lifting it up. So you feel the glute, the hamstring, everything turned on in the back line of the body, staying strong and engaged within the spine, the back of the spine for five, four, three, two, one. Can you keep your hands at heart center? Can you deepen the bend in that right knee and reach those left toes back? As the left toes plant, inhale, crescent lunge. Strong and proud here, pulling that left hip point forward, lifting through the belly. Hands plant. High plank, downward facing dog. Keep that lift within the hips. Take a breath. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot comes between the hands. Really drive that left knee in towards the chest to get you there. Inhale, crescent lunge. Pulling up and forward that right hip point but still driving down through that back heel. So you're really lengthening from front to, from top to bottom. And staying strong and committed to that front knee. Hands come down to frame the foot. You're tilting that torso forward, extending through that left leg. Sending those hips back in space. Can we get a little bit longer within the back line of that left leg? And then go ahead and bring the hands inside the left foot. Spin that right heel down. Feeling your body starting to open towards the right side of the room. Left hand stays planted or on the shin or on a block. Open that right arm up and over towards the sky. Gaze up towards the hand or it can stay low or it can be straight out in front of you. Feeling that inner lining of that left thigh really open as you try to spin the hips open towards the right. Close it all off, bring that right hand back down. Spinning onto those back toes, frame that front left foot once more. Bending into that left knee. Take a little mini step of that right foot a little bit closer if you need some support. Bring those hands out in front towards the top of the mat. Bend into that left knee a little bit more. Take on a little bit more weight. Dragging those right toes back behind you until it's ready to lift. Really kicking that heel up towards the sky. Feeling the glute turn on. Feeling those hips staying squared down to the mat. If you're feeling strong and steady here, you can always stay there. If you want to challenge yourself, can you bring the left hand to heart center? The right hand to meet the left. Can you lift your torso up a little bit more, staying strong in the front of the belly, staying strong within the muscles along the spine? Can you lift your torso off your thigh for five, four, three, two, one? Feel free to bring the hands back down to the mat if you need. Otherwise, keeping those hands at heart center, can you reach those right toes back, 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 back until they plant? Inhale, arms up overhead. High crescent lunge. Coming out of that left foot, left leg for just a moment, so stay a little bit stronger in that right leg to help balance it out. Hands come back down to the floor. Step the left foot back, coming to that high plank, take your vinyasa. So from here, take your full push up. Drop the knees, sit the hips back, gaze forward. Drop the forearms, inhale, pull through, upward facing dog. Then exhale, downward facing dog. Excellent, we've got one more round. So take a breath or, breath or two here. We're gonna put it all together. Inhale, right leg lifts high and back behind you. Exhale, right foot comes in between the hands. Once that right foot plants, drop that back knee to a hover. 
Inhale, coming into a bent leg lunge. Arms up overhead, pull that left hip point forward. Exhale, can you keep those hips low and drive that left heel back behind you to straighten the left leg. Inhale, hands to heart center, start to tilt the torso over that front leg. Again, coming onto the back toes, shifting that weight forward. Take more weight into that right leg until you're ready to lift the back knee, or the back leg, up and back behind you, coming into warrior three. Stay here, or if you'd like to challenge your balance a little bit more. If you have a block, you can always use it. Plant the right hand, fingertips onto the floor, start to spin the hips open, coming into half moon. You can always stay in warrior three. Challenge your balance in whatever space feels good for you today. Hanging out here for five, four, three, two, one. If you moved into half moon, everyone's meeting in warrior three. Pause here for a moment. Keeping the hands at heart center, soften that right knee even more as you reach those left toes back until they plant. Inhale. Crescent lunge, exhale, hands plant, set the right foot back, high plank, exhale, downward facing dog, inhale, left leg lifts, exhale, left foot between the hands, really drive that left knee in towards the chest, soften that back knee to a hover, inhale, double bent leg lunge, arms up overhead, pull that right hip point forward. Keeping the hips low, on that exhale, can you drive that right heel back behind you, straightening that right knee. On the inhale, hands come to heart center, tilt the torso forward, take more weight into that left foot, drag the right toes back behind you until that leg lifts. Stay here. Or bring the right, the left hand down to the earth, start to spin the hips open towards the right. Right hand can stay at heart center. You can open that right arm up and over. Gaze can stay down, gaze can stay out. Gaze can go up. We're here for five, four, three, two, one. If you moved into half moon, close it all off nice and slow. Everyone's coming back to warrior three. Staying lifted within the torso, reach those right toes back as you soften that left knee a little bit more. Right toes plant, inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Left foot meets the right high plank. Your final vinyasa, exhale, push up. Drop the knees, sit the hips back, gaze forward. Drop the forearms, inhale, pull the body up and through, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take three breaths here. And then go ahead and drop the knees. Bring the knees a little bit wider. Big toes to touch. Sit the hips back, child's pose. Keeping those fingertips reaching towards the top of the mat. Trying to create as much length as you can within the back line of the body. Hips don't have to be at the heels. Allow your low back to lengthen. Aiming towards that direction, knowing that connection doesn't have to be there just yet. Nice and slow, go ahead and walk the hands over towards the right. And as you start to settle into this little side body stretch, really pull that left hip back behind you Trying to open up that left rib cage. Walk the hands back through center, over towards the left. Really reaching through the fingertips, anchoring at that point there, as well as the right hip. So really pulling that right hip crease back in space. A 
walk the hands back through center. Release the right arm underneath the left. Come down onto your left, your right ear, gazing over towards the left, coming to thread the needle. Unravel back to center, stretch the arms out long before transitioning over to the other side, left arm underneath the right, left ear down, gaze to the right. Come back towards center. And then go ahead and walk the hands back towards your knees. So we're gonna go come into a front body, front hip opener, and move into this space as much as you feel you are able, depending on your knees, your back, anything like that. We're coming into hero's pose. So go ahead and keeping the knees towards one another. You're gonna sit in between your heels and start here. If this feels like a lot right off the bat, go ahead and grab a block, sneak that underneath your sit bones, and then just go ahead and bring your fingertips behind your toes and just open the front of the body and hang out here, okay? But if you, if you, are, feel health, if you have healthy knees, if you feel strong in the knees and you don't have any limitations there in regards to pain, discomfort, things like that. Go ahead and find your seat. So as you come into your shape, go ahead and start to descend at your own pace. So it can be just hanging out here. And again, you can always grab the block and stay there. But go ahead and start to lower down nice and slow, scooping the tailbone underneath you, maybe coming down onto forearms. You can stay here. Maybe you lower all the way down to your shoulders, back of your head, comes down to the earth. Hands can rest on the belly, or you can bring your arms, grab opposite elbows overhead. If there's any discomfort at any point, if you feel like you're forcing the shape, whether it's the knees, the low back, come out of the pose, maybe just a step or so and see if that helps bring a little bit more comfort, a little bit more ease. Just find three more breaths or so. And then go ahead and nice and slow begin to reverse your entry, <laughs> your entry into the shape. So go ahead and coming up onto your elbows, onto, onto your forearms, pausing and then slowly bringing your hands underneath you. Back up, coming up and over your shins, crossing the ankles, and sitting back onto the hips. Keeping that right knee, that right foot, sole of the foot in towards the inner lining of the left leg as the left leg extends out in front of you. Go ahead and sit tall to start, find a tall spine. And then go ahead and shine the torso over that left leg and start to tilt the torso down and over. Keeping that low back nice and long, so keeping that tailbone reaching back behind you. 
You can grab hold of behind that leg in whatever capacity, maybe make it all the way down to the sole of the foot. Just try and stay as long as you can, both within the spine, within the back of that left leg. And then once you feel like you've maximized the length on both ends, then you can soften the head, soften the neck. Coming into the shape with a straight leg is not something that's in your capacity. You can always, always, always keep that left knee bent to make the connection happen. Go ahead and release your hold, walk the torso back up. Then extend that right leg long, bring the left foot in. Find a tall spine to start. Then go ahead and just that gentle spin of the torso over that right leg. And then go ahead and slowly start to walk the torso down. And as, as my torso comes down, sometimes it's easier just kind of get the soft tissue out of the way before you get started. And sometimes you find that it's easier to do that as you're going. So as you make your way down, maybe flicking those sit bones, that tailbone back behind you as you move feels more accessible. Just staying long all the way from the tailbone, sacrum, the low back all the way through the crown of the head to start. And then when you, once you feel it's like, once you feel like you've maximized your length, your compression, then you can go ahead and soften the head. Keeping those shoulders down and away from your ears. Although you are closing off your shape, you don't want there to be an active lift of the shoulders in towards the, in towards the ears. You want that to soften. Like you're scooping the shoulders back and down and away, kind of giving your neck and your head some space to kind of grow out of your torso, if that metaphor or if that visual helps for you at all. Go ahead and slowly start to walk the hands back up, lift the torso. And then go right ahead and bring that right foot in, coming just to a cross-legged easy seat, just for a moment. Grab hold of the knees with those the palms and just pull the chest and heart forward. Crown of the head reaching reaches long, shoulders come down. Just taking a nice proud seat here. I'm gonna take four breaths, just to kind of bring everything all together our next posture here is going to be Shavasana. So before we come to our final rest, taking the opportunity here for a moment of gratitude. Soften the eyes. Keep any of that unneeded outside energy away from your space. Keeping the focus inward. Then go ahead and blink the eyes open, unravel your seat, extend the legs long out in front of you. And then go ahead nice and slow round the spine down and onto your mat. And come into that same shape that you came into in the start of class, maybe make it even bigger. Just really giving you and your body the opportunity to melt down.
fall heavy to allow all that energy you created into class to really pull you down into the floor like you're melting right into your mat. Feel your gentle scoop of that tailbone so that you can rest onto the softer part of your bottom, scooping the shoulder blades underneath your chest to keep that nice and open, receptive to the positive energy around you. Thinking of yourself as still being in that orb of energy. So you're still able to feel the air around you. Maybe the maybe you can hear the music in the background for me, maybe even just the simplicity of your breath. That's the kind of energy I want you to be taking in. That helps to bring the focus on something intentional because towards this part of class, the tendency is to be like, okay, I know the work is done. Now what am I about to do after this? What's next? Where do I have to go next? What's on my to-do list? It's human nature. <laughs> That when stillness comes, we like to fill it up. Because that stillness may feel unwarranted sometimes. But know that in this moment, you have worked to be into this moment. Not that you need to work to be into stillness, but give yourself permission to be here. to breathe and to keep that deserving focus inward and on your body, on your breath. Slowly start to wiggle the toes, wiggle the fingers. All that energy that pulled you deep into the earth, let it surge back through you ever so subtly. Then as we did in the beginning of class, reach those heels towards the top of the mat, reach those fingertips up and overhead, really stretch your body out. And then come into a nice closed off shape over onto your right side, bending the knees in towards the chest, taking the elbows down into your belly. Pause here, keeping your eyes closed. And then keeping that gaze closed or down or eyes closed, go ahead and sit yourself up. Find an easy seat once more. And slowly start to blink the eyes open, coming back into your space. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you guys enjoy today's flow. I look forward to seeing y'all next time and have an awesome day.